Welcome to the Recon Trader. In today's video, I will share with you a few of the top secret or really just lesser known charts that I actually use when trading crypto assets like Bitcoin. So let's get right into the weeds. Now, the first thing I will need to do is to drag those charts over here to my main screen and I need to jump over to a screen over here and I can drag those charts into this screen and drop them here. And the charting software I use is TradingView and this is pretty much the software that's available on most exchanges and you can also get a free TradingView account. I will drop a link in the description down below if for some reason you don't currently use TradingView charts. So with that all being said, just a quick glance over here at the six charts that I have pulled up. Obviously, I have Bitcoin and Ethereum are going to be the first two charts. The next chart is actually the market cap dominance of Bitcoin, and that would be its dominance over the rest of the crypto market. And anytime I see the Bitcoin dominance rising, I'm more than likely to be trading Bitcoin because typically that means it is outperforming the altcoins like ETH or ADA or Matic or Sol or DOT. Anyway, you get the idea. When Bitcoin's dominance is rising, Bitcoin is typically outperforming the altcoins. And so as you can see over here on the daily chart over the past few days, maybe just over a week or so, Bitcoin, while it has been selling off, the altcoins have been selling off even more. And so Bitcoin is outperforming the altcoins as far as the Bitcoin dominance goes. Now, after Bitcoin, ETH, and Bitcoin dominance, the next chart I have pulled up would be the US dollar index. And the way I really use this chart is typically Bitcoin moves in the opposite direction of the US dollar index. So when the US dollar index is moving down, Bitcoin typically is trading up. And that is actually the case today. The dollar sold off and Bitcoin had a little bit of a bounce, not much. But if you look at yesterday when the dollar was rising, Bitcoin was falling. So that is what I am typically looking to compare. If I zoom back out, you can see Bitcoin is rising today for the most part and the dollar was falling for the most part. And so you can see where they're doing the opposite. If I start to see a big green candle on the dollar, I might take a glance over at the Bitcoin chart and see if there's an opportunity for a short. And on the flip side, if I see the dollar selling off, I'll be looking to perhaps get long on Bitcoin. Now, I do want to stress none of this intel is 100% all the time. There are times when the dollar is rising and Bitcoin's rising. So you do, at the end of the day, obviously need to do your recon before you just jump into a trade blindly. Now, the next chart is the S&P 500 index. And lately, both BTC and ETH have been pretty correlated with the S&P or the overall U.S. stock market seem to be moving in tandem. And yesterday, you can see there was a sell off on the S&P 500. Well, Bitcoin pretty much sold off. Today was not quite as correlated where the S&P sold off at the beginning of the day. Bitcoin did kind of sell off at the beginning of the day. We had a bounce up. And since then, the S&P has been pretty choppy. Where if we look at the Bitcoin chart, there's kind of a couple doji candles right as the stock market was actually opening in the U.S. Then when the S&P 500 pumped, so did Bitcoin. And now that that market is moving sideways, Bitcoin's kind of moving sideways and slightly down. And while I have this chart pulled up, you will also notice that I have the news pulled up over here on the right hand side of the screen. And you get to that via this little icon that looks something like a newspaper. And you can see Bitcoin dominance is stronger than it's been in six months. So again, the alts are really weak. So perhaps good opportunities to short some alts. And if we look a little further down, you can see as the market bleeds, Bitcoin dominance hits seven month high. Again, just another reason why I look at the Bitcoin dominance chart. Now, if I continue to scroll through this news, something else you'll notice is Bitcoin, Ethereum reach extremely high correlation with stocks. As I mentioned, that's why I have the S&P chart pulled up because right now Bitcoin and Ethereum are highly correlated with the current stock market. 
Now, the final chart of these six is going to be the Bitcoin CME futures. Now, I don't use this chart nearly as much as I do, perhaps, say, the S&P 500 or the dollar index. What I really use this chart for are the gaps and for the gaps to get filled. And as you can see here, I have over time highlighted some gaps and you can see that Bitcoin gaps up. Eventually, that gap gets filled. If Bitcoin gaps up. Eventually, that gap gets filled. Once again, we get a Bitcoin gap up. Again, that gap gets filled. Now, on the flip side, we have currently a gap down on Bitcoin as it has sold off and is perhaps finding support. So the question becomes, do we see over the next week or so a fill of this gap, which would have Bitcoin coming back up into the 36,000 level in order to fill this gap? It would not surprise me at all that we see some kind of bounce here from Bitcoin to fill this gap and then perhaps Bitcoin rolls back over and might even sell off even lower than this low back here. And these gaps are pretty much the only reason I have the Bitcoin CME futures chart pulled up. So again, the six charts that I have pulled up constantly on probably my largest screen over here to the left are going to be Bitcoin and Ethereum, obviously, uh, Bitcoin's dominance, U.S. dollar index, S&P 500 index, and the Bitcoin CME futures. These are the charts I pretty much watch all day long. And on the bigger monitor, they're actually a lot larger than what they look like here on this particular screen. I get a lot more data because this chart is a lot more expanded over on this bigger screen. But I do want to point out in order to have this type of configuration in TradingView, you will need one of their top tier uh, subscriptions. But you could just as easily open six different windows with one chart in each window and then arrange it on your screen if it was a big enough screen. So I'm not saying you need to pay for a TradingView subscription. You can certainly use the free subscription and get all this data that I'm showing you today. So that's enough jaw jacking for this video. If you like this video, do me a favor, spike a like. If you are not already subscribed, you might want to shoot that subscribe button so you don't miss future videos. If you have questions or comments, drop them in the comment section down below. I will drop a link to TradingView in the description down below. And in closing, remember, never send your money into battle without first doing your recon. See you in the next video.